Welcome friends and welcome to my haunted mansion episode. Today I'm going to talk to you about my time in the mansion working on the animatronics, props, set designs, and all that jazz. <music> So to start out, I still remember the first time I walked through the mansion, I was actually kind of scared. I was one of those cast members that I believed in the myths and all of the history when Walt was building the mansion, how it sat there vacant for so long, the facade, when he was going out to get ghosts. I was told by my mentors at Figure Finishing and Imagineering that there are real ghosts in there. And my friend Allie, who worked in the mansion as a cast member, what are the girls, they're not butlers, are they like maids? Um, she said that there is this weird looking little table next to Madame Leota in the seance scene. And apparently like no one's allowed to touch it and it's cursed. And if you do touch it, like, so I, don't, I don't know what will happen. But I remember when I walked through that scene, I saw that little bench and I was like, okay, I'm not gonna touch that little table. But my experience at the mansion was really fun. A lot of the times the figures that I worked on came from the mansion into the shop. So for example, the thumbnail of this episode and right here, I'll, I'll attach it. The Raven, you know, there's a lot of Ravens and honestly, there are only one set of each, which is really weird. Um, a lot of times, especially in the older figures, there is only one where opposed to the newer animatronics and in the newer attractions, there are duplicates. There are duplicates for certain figures if they are really imperative to the storytelling of the attraction and the narrative. So that Raven came down, it was really fun to be able to paint something like that. And I actually painted the Raven that is in the graveyard scene as you lower down from the attic into the graveyard in the tree. Um, so that was really a fun experience. Walking through the attraction is quite the maze. You know, I if you've ever gotten to do that alternative queue, you'll kind of know that there there's like a full-on maze. It's like labyrinth under the ride, truly. And it's really interesting because there are so many aspects of that attraction that are so hard to get to and that you have to get tagged out and like have you know fall restrictions and i remember one time i was looking at pickwick up in the attic and you know you had to be able to put up the bars so you actually don't fall into the ballroom scene because those figures of course are in the back of what the guests see so that the pepper's ghost effect works so it's kind of like a jungle gym walking into that attraction from the loading area is really fun you kind of walk through the endless hallway and i remember the second door on the left is the actual door that will take you around that screen to that floating candlestick and that candlestick was fun my mentor and i Doug, were looking at the candlestick and we were painting the back of it so it didn't reflect on the mirror in the background because it was doing a really weird looking like it was just showing when we did um, show checks in the attraction and then we continued down and all that wallpaper is just beautiful. I really wish guests would have that experience to actually walk through the attraction. Like I've gotten the chance to, there's such detail. There's like little notes for Mark Davis next to that coffin um, and a bunch of other Imagineers on those flowers that not a lot of people see. Looking in that coffin was kind of scary. I like peeked in there and all it is is just like the arms to here up of a skeleton and then the clock and then that door. I remember touching the door, I was like, how does this move? But it's actually a silicone door painted to look like wood. Of course, the 13 clock was really cool to see up close. And then there's Madame Leota. Madame Leota's seance room was pretty spectacular. I remember Kim always telling us about her mom and kind of the behind the scenes of how that effect is accomplished. And it is so revolutionary for its time any time really, but the fact that it came out so early in like the 60s, Yael Gracie, one of Walt's original Imagineers, was just, a, it just taps, hats off to his genius because it's spectacular. And once you go into the ballroom, you have to go like downstairs to get there through the back, actually kind of right, you enter kind of right where the staircase is. And there is such 
and awe moment when you have the ability to walk through there. It is a full on table. The set is so high. There is glass that goes from the floor to the top of the ceiling and it goes all the way across. Now, a lot of you may know that the glass in the last section from the pillar to the wall by the organ player, I guess somebody had brought like a gun or a BB gun and shot the glass. So Disney decided to put a spider over that little like crack so it looks like a spider's web so here's a fun little like behind the scenes for you the actual glass is replaceable so there is only one duplicate or should i say like one spare of that section but in order for that section to be placed in the roof has to be popped off and then it has to be taken out and then the new one has to be lowered in as you know, the Haunted Mansion is old. That's gonna cost a lot of money. So even, I think that happened in like the late 80s, it's still there. And I think it's just kind of become an Easter egg for people to like spot the spider. But it was finally taken care of in the diorama in this, the steam trains, finally. So yeah, the ballroom scene's spectacular. You know, you, you can walk up the stairs to a certain point and then like the organ itself is actually in the ballroom and then the player is playing nothing and it's so fun to see all the ghosts on the opposite side and the ghosts are right under the attraction vehicle track so you can see the zoom buggies zooming and you could see the ghosts or the animatronics i should say working and it's just such a fun effect i always really enjoyed that going down to the graveyard is where a lot of the figures and a lot of the time that I spent there working um, are because there's just so many figures. And yeah, I think that recently the, the use of LED lighting with the black light really just married the two beautifully. That screen was finally lifted. A lot of times that screen was used because people would throw stuff at the animatronics. People do not realize the extent that the guests have on these figures. I would get called all the time to, normally the Fantasyland dark rides like Peter Pan or Snow White Scary Adventure because people spit on figures. Yes, people spit, people throw stuff, chips, bags, I mean, ice cream, you name it. And I don't know why people do this, but saliva in particular reacts to LED and it glows. So people will see like a stain down Captain Hook or on Wendy. So we have to go there and clean it. And we use something called Simple Green. It's something that is a natural, obviously cleaner, but it also doesn't take away from the paint. You know, that's something that every time you use a chemical that is a little bit more harsh, um, it will take off the paint. And that's not something we want to do. So that's why painters do that. Because even if Simple Green were to take off a little bit, we have the color documentation. We could color match it on the spot to make sure that the figure is looking show ready. So the graveyard scene definitely had a lot of figures. A lot of people don't notice the owls. I think the owls are spectacular. I remember when the cats came into the shop, they were really fun. And walking through, all of them are in this really weird, like rain jacket, transparent, translucent looking outfits. And then their actual skin of the figures are like, what are they called? Like redder molds. Um, and they're basically transparent, see-through plastic casts that go over the skeleton of the animatronic. And all the figures that you see in Disneyland have these. These are the only ones that are exposed. Pirates of the Caribbean, they are transparent figures. Um, and then they're covered obviously with clothes, but these are actual transparent shells. And then they have the transparent clothing over it so you can technically see through it but a lot of times you do see the parts but there's not that many figures especially in these older animatronics that have a lot of parts that are too visible and especially you zoom by these guys so so fast and a lot of these are actually painted green it's like a ghost green that we use the color and then Moving along the graveyard, obviously the busts are really cool. Every time I walked through it, they weren't on, but they're just plain face busts. Like they really, they have like indention of the eyes, but they don't actually have like the detail as like a bust would. And I remember I really liked the mummy. He was really cool to see up close. The opera lady singer, she has the same hair as the Yeti. It was a really nice thick hair and it just glows perfectly in LED black light. 
and then you will see the hitchhiking ghosts and i actually had the honor of working on both sets for the parks and my own which is right here and i loved 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 working on these guys i kind of cheated and got a front row seat of how they look the hun mansion is it's a lot of illusion making at its finest there's a lot more rooms that you don't see behind the scenes that you see actually on the attraction because the attraction is so complex and it has so many moving parts to make that illusion happen and it's not even just the figures and the lighting um, in the attic for example if you ever get the chance to walk through it there's so many beautiful vintage things um, you'll actually see one of my um, old ADs um, Jim Crouch as I think it's like the second husband of um, the bride and actually in the attic right when you enter the attic if you turn left you will see this weird looking it looks like a garage door or for storage painted black and i actually always think we should put curtains there and some more like shelving and kind of just junk because what else do you put in an attic but that's where the tower is at the attraction where you tag out put your id and then you are able to walk through so that's really fun um so yeah like I said the Haunted Mansion is just a spectacular attraction. One of my favorites. It's not my favorite, but it's one of them. It's one of those that the original Imagineers just pour their heart and souls into. And a lot of kudos goes to Rolly Crump. You see so much of his design, Mark Davis, Clyde Coates, like all of the, all of the best, right? All of the most iconic Imagineers that we know and love today worked on that baby and you could just see and it's very interesting to see an attraction that's inspired two films i actually loved the 2003 eddie murphy feature i thought it was just spectacular i loved what they did with the entrance it's kind of like my dream house where you have two stairways cascading up at an angle and i actually have quite a bit of stuff from the haunted mansion in terms of props i have obviously like i said some hitchhiking ghosts. I have like one of those skeleton skulls that comes out of the organ. What else do I have? I made Madame Leota. That was a really, really fun project. Really expensive project, actually. Not, the ball itself was just ridiculously priced. Um, I, I just love recreating all of these figures. I just find it such a challenge to replicate things perfectly. Um, what else do I have? I know I have something else. Oh, the door handle. Um, it would be really cool to have a doom buggy, but where am I going to put it, right? I'm already out of space. By the way, I am upgrading my studio, so if you don't see a lot of studio behind me, um, that's why. Um, you will get a brand new studio reveal once um, I set up everything. So until then, if you liked this video, please let me know. Hit subscribe, like, and comment what's your favorite part about the mansion. Who is your favorite character? Because there are so many unique characters in the mansion. Hatbox Ghost definitely is mine. Oh, I painted him too, by the way. When he was um, added into the attraction, I got to paint him. That was really fun. Can't believe I forgot that. He's new, sort of. He was there, then he was gone. But yeah, that's all for this week. I hope that you have a wonderful day and always remember dreamers, not only to follow your dreams, but to chase them. Later.